Good morning, and welcome to the show. Happy Tuesday, you guys. Happy Tuesday. Today is one of my favorite days, Q&A day. What, I think that's weird because I find myself saying that most days are my favorite days. So that's a little confusing, um, but I think a good problem. Shall we get to it? Yeah, so I want to I wanna say, um, okay, if you guys are new on Tuesdays, we answer your questions. If you have questions for us, you can submit them through the announcement section in the main page, which is where we go live on. Now, in regards to these questions, if it's regarding a specific program and you're confused about something, please send an email to support at erinandserit.com because that's support the best. Support or admin? Support, because that's the best place for those. Any general questions about health, fitness, wellness, nutrition, um, mindset, stuff like that, relationships, money, any question that will benefit multiple people are the questions that we answer on these shows. So if you are asking a, a question in regards to a specific program that you purchased or um, you're having a hard time finding something, um, please send those questions to support at erinandsarit.com. These questions are for the community to benefit. So we like to answer the ones that benefit multiple people. But I do see some new names. So if this is your first time or second time or just your first week watching this show, then do us a favor and drop a comment and say hashtag first timer and tell us where are you from and where are you representing. Thank you, Lauren. And, and to all of our OGs, it's great to see you as well. Um, also for anybody new, um, all of our team hangs out in this page to support you guys as well. Tammy Jarrett, many of you know. We have Lauren Cope, Lauren Waymeyer, Crystal Catalina. We have Cez Thomas. We have Ashley Riddle. We have, I think I said everybody. We have Nick Kobzar. 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 I'm going to always struggle with that last name, Nick. I'm so sorry. In the house. And... We have Sarit Atwood and Aaron Atwood. And Boogie. And Boogie Atwood. Atwood. Duh. All right. So if any of them are, are commenting on your stuff or providing support and answers for you, you can trust well, them. We got to show them the puppy situation right now. And this now. is ridiculous because they've, they've decided that they like each other's beds better than their own. So here we are. Oh, turn your phone. Okay. So this is the situation here. And Boogie's doing his best impression of a potato. How do you like it? So cute. They've potato gotten Potato man. Potato man. All right. All right. Now let's get to the questions. Question number one from Nicole Craig in Memphis, Tennessee. Mm. I just joined this group and I'm not sure where to start for one. Welcome. Um, I see people talking about a program, sharing their successes, etc. Even if you don't answer this on your live program, can someone please send me a, send a message? In the meantime, I'll keep digging around the group. Well, I mean, we already, we already read it. So um, the truth is, you guys, um, if you're new to this page, for one, welcome. For two, we offer a lot of programs and services, depending on whatever your need is. We will take care of you. Um, Crystal or Nick, if you see this or if you're here right now, can you please send a message to Nicole Craig? Nicole Craig. Um, and figure out, the first thing we need to know, hey, if anybody has questions about, hey, I need help with something, I don't know where to start, I don't know what program to be in, um, on this main page, we'll run, you know, different various programs or challenges. This is kind of where the promotion of anything happens. So it can get confusing when you jump in. You're like, this person's doing that and this person's doing that. And oh my gosh, well, there are specific group pages for all of these two, but people like to share their wins to the community and that's an amazing thing. So you'll see different various groups popping up here and there. Um, but you know, if you are wanting help with your weight loss, with your health, with your fitness, then 
please send an email to admin at erinandsari.com and, and, and let us know there's three things we need to know from you is what is your major goal right now? How long has that been a goal for you or something that you've been struggling with? And what things have you already tried in order to get there? And we'll just open that conversation and take it from there and fi- figure out where, where is the best place for you? What do you need? Where should we direct you? Yeah. But Crystal or Nick, if you can please reach out to Nicole Craig. Um, since she asked this question, that'll be amazing. Priscilla. Priscilla from Idlewild. I didn't know she Did, was in Idlewild. Didn't, didn't we visit yeah. Idlewild? Yeah, it was for your birthday. What, what a serene place that place is. <laughs> Such a cute spot. I remember that we did sprints up the driveway and... Oh, yeah, it was like that's a big-ass like hill. Hilly, hilly-ass driveway. <laughs> um, yeah, that was good. Looking for wrist guards online, looking for recommendations. You mean wrist wraps. Priscilla moved, by the way. She's no longer there. Or maybe she is there now. What is this from? I don't know. Um, but if you're looking for wrist guards, I'm wondering if you're rollerblading because that's when I wanted to wear wrist guards. The little Those ones. Things. The little ones. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, I think she means. I have wraps. no idea if that's what you're talking about. I would try uh, Dick's Sporting Goods or something like that. Um, but wrist wraps. Um, I, it, those are a preference. Like I prefer the ones that do not have Velcro. I mm-hmm. prefer the, yeah. the ones that you wrap and then you can twist them to tighten them. But I think we should have ENS wrist wraps. Hey, would you guys like it if we posted a list of like good quality things that you can maybe get from like Amazon or something like that? I think we can create like a list on Amazon and then share the list. If it's something you guys want, we'd be happy to do that for like, you know, what are your staple equipment you would want to have at your house or, you know, different like commonly used, um, supportive equipment. Okay, cool. We'll do that. We will do that. We will do that. This we got a loaded question. Is a bit of a. I have a feeling that we could probably spend all of the rest of the conversation on this, but we're gonna see. Yes, gear list, please. Gear list. You guys got it. You got it. We're gonna do that. Okay. I'll make a note. I was gonna. I was gonna ask <laughs> Ashley to send me an email. <laughs> I'll just make a note. Yeah, we'll make a note of that. Okay. So Lisa gear, Ralph, I'll get on this one. Gear and what? Okay, right. I'll read. This is a long one. Lisa Ralph from Bristol in the UK. Firstly, thank you so much for everything that you do. You're so inspiring, genuine love, passion, enthusiasm, and fun you have too. I'm glad I found you. Thank you for letting me be part of this awesome community. Thank you. Despite improving lots of habits from the raw transformation, I'm still struggling with getting out of bed in the mornings. I can't spring out of bed like Aaron. (laughs) How do you guys know what I do? I like snoozing or lying there for half an hour or more. I've tried planning this snoozing period into my morning routine, but during the holidays when there's nothing to force me up for, I really struggle to get my arse out of bed and stay in bed for ages. I'm still sleepy and my body feels fatigued, so I need the time to wake up first. Any tips on how you can just spring out of bed? you think it gets better as you get more consistent? Okay, let's stop there for a second because that's a lot. But basically, what we're wanting to know is I feel, I feel really tired in the morning. I want to hit the snooze button. Any tips on how to get myself more energized more quickly in the morning so I can get out of bed when my alarm goes off and not want to lay there forever? That's what I'm getting out of this question. Mm-hmm. So this is a conversation about Aaron versus Sarit. <laughs> Let's take it back um, six years ago, before Sarit and I met. When the alarm went off, I was up. Sarit, 
Six years ago, what would you do? Before we met? Yeah. How many times did you hit snooze? And how long was the snooze period? So it was tricky, and I will tell you why. Because I'm not a snoozer by nature. Like before we met, I wouldn't snooze. I would just sleep in later. Now I wake up hella early. So, but, but here's, here's what I'm getting to. Before we met, well, I mean, you, you know my situation. But before we met, um, you know, when you, when you are an immigrant, you guys, sometimes you want to do things and you're kind of limited with how much you can do. So, um, you know, there, there were certain days when I had certain things and certain things where I didn't. Um, but basically when I had something to do that day, when the alarm went off, I would spring out of bed. And when I didn't have something to do, I would not set an alarm and I would just sleep in for, you know, until my body was ready to wake up. Um, at this point in our life, our day is just, you know, I feel like sometimes when the alarm goes off, like I, it just, it takes me a couple of minutes because like I'm legit tired. Like I could probably just get more sleep. But I wake my ass up anyways, um, really early because I have this extensive morning routine that, you know, I have to do because if, if I don't do it, then I don't feel like I can be present for the day and for you guys. Um, and that's a non-negotiable. Um, so sometimes Boogie and I have like a, you know, 15 minute snuggle session while Erin's already doing her stretches and brushing her teeth. And then I get my ass up at like 4.15 in the morning. But to go back to your question, you know, the, and the reason why I'm sharing all this with you guys is because you talked about how hard it is for you to wake up during the holidays. It sounds like during the holidays, you didn't really have anything to wake up to. Um, so I think this is more of a purpose thing rather than a, I'm a snoozer. I don't think that mm -hmm. you are... A snoozer in nature I just think that you know when you're not fired up to do something you're like I'm still kind of tired so like why not just stay in bed um, that's exactly what I was thinking it's a purpose thing yeah I don't I don't think it's you know like it's this habit that I have that's terrible I think it's you guys like in life everything is intertwined so you being a snoozer, like, please, like, don't, like, don't identify yourself as a snoozer. Um, you know, with regards to the holidays, you just probably didn't have as many things that you're, you normally do. Um, so you're like, why bother? But if this happens, you know, on a, like, long term, I would ask myself a few questions to kind of like get down to the root of it and figure out, you know, am I living a life that's in alignment with what I want to become? Because you guys, like when you are not fired up about what you're doing, um, when you are stressed out, of course you'll want to stay in bed because it's kind of like, it's a coping mechanism. You're not running away from it, but you're sleeping <laughs> your way out of it. It's like, well, what else am I gonna do? Exactly. And that's why people who have- no urgency. Yeah, and that's why people who, who um, have depression also have a tendency to sleep in. It's not because they're lazy or anything, it's because they're depressed and you know they, they just deal with it by sleeping. Because when they wake up, they have to deal with all these things that depress them. I used to be that way. And that's why I'm like six years ago was way better than I was 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I would sleep in until 10 a.m. because I just felt anxious to wake up. 
because I was like, there's all these things that I can't wrap my head around. So like, why bother wake up? It's like when I'm dreaming, things are more calm. Um, so that's my two cents. Yeah. And the rest of this is literally copied and pasted. So same. Um, oh, I got it. But, you know, there's a few things that I thought about. The first one is when you don't have something exciting to wake up for, I want to sleep in too. Like when we took a little bit of flex time and we went away for the holiday, mm. we woke up, a little, like we normally, our alarm goes off at 4 a.m. But we were waking up at what, 6.30? Sometimes not even getting out of bed till seven because it felt good. And for us, there was a still an intention to that was like recover, like yeah. reset yourself, right? Yeah. But when you're excited about something, think about when you're really excited, some event is happening or you're going on vacation or you're gonna travel somewhere or like a kid wanting to go to Disneyland or like the, the night before Christmas, you know, it's like you're so amped up and excited about whatever it is that's coming that like you can't help but get your ass up. Mm -hmm. You're like, I got shit to do. We got places to be, things to do, people to see. And you get up. That's like intention and purpose. Now, a lot of people don't like the jobs that they do, unfortunately. And so, of or course. Or the life that they're living. Or, yeah, so, so when your alarm goes off, you're like, ah, fuck, it's time again, you know? And there's that attitude going into the day versus excitement. Now, um, you can create an intention, you can create a purpose, you can create something exciting that you enjoy doing in your mornings that will help you to be motivated to get up because you are excited to do that thing. Um, now, the other question I ask is, when did you go to bed? How much sleep did you get? Mm -hmm. How well are you sleeping? Because like, if you went to bed at like midnight and your alarm's going off at five, I'd be fucking tired too. And especially if it's chronic. You know, if you're getting not enough sleep over and over and over and over, it is going to be hard to wake up Yeah. for normal day activities. Yeah. And a lot of the reasons why people feel, uh, this is one of my ideas, is that people feel uh, not excited about their lives because they don't know how to create excitement in the mundane activities of Ooh. adulthood. Fire. You don't know how to create excitement in normal day activities. So it's like, oh, every day is just the same. Oh, here's another day. Ah, I got the case of the Mondays. Why? Just another day. Why is Monday different than Wednesday mm -hmm. or different than uh, Saturday? It's because of what you choose to do. It's because of what's happening in your day. If something's exciting, you're like, ah, yay, and I'm happy about it. So you have to find the things like what makes me excited. How do I add spice to my normal routine so that it doesn't feel so boring and bleh? Yeah. Um, and then the last thing that I thought about is just like a straight up tactic is put your alarm in the corner of the room. So when that sh and put like make the most irritating alarm so that when it goes off, you're like, ah, shit. And <laughs> you're like... You just get up. You're like, I just want it to stop. And then you're already up. Don't lay your ass back in bed. Yeah. If you, if you want to go back in bed, do 10 burpees. But for that, you need to be held accountable because if this is a habit, your mind will really want you to walk back in bed into your cozy bed. I'm just telling you that from experience, Lisa asked the question and she's like, well, um, what time did you go to bed um, that you woke up at? 4 15 i think we were in bed at what like 8 45 last night but you guys like there's some days when we just we have like we are in constant stimulation and i think on days like that like my body actually needs like nine hours but like seven and a half like i know from a health standpoint i'm like okay that this is what i need so it, it might just take 
a little extra uh, just get up um, and you know it is a sacrifice that we all have to make but again it's all based off of our goals you know, I'm like, for as long as my health is not being jeopardized, if I'm going to wake up a little bit more tired, whatever, I'll deal with it. Um, I remember Conti's alarm that rolls around the room. <laughs> Tiffany oh just, God. Tiffany just reminded me. Conti has, Nicole Conti has, uh, ask her where she got it. I don't know. She has this alarm that rolls around the room and she has to like <laughs> chase it to turn it off. It's amazing. Yeah. Somebody but, is clever with that. But, you know, something that I would, if if you guys are like, hmm, no, I'm not sure, like, am I a snoozer or do I just need to add more spice to my life? Or get more sleep. Or get more sleep. Um, I would recommend for each and every one of you guys, like, make seven hours your goal. Like, just from a physiological standpoint, like, your body needs it. Um, very rarely will you find that you will need less. Some people are those super freaks that are just like, all my body needs is five, um, but it rarely happens. Now, especially like if you are, um, you know, consistent with your workouts and your go-getter, and you, like you're, you're being stimulated physiologically, mentally throughout the day. You know, seven and a, seven hours, like, make it a baseline. Now, some people are like, look, I like Melanie G. She's like, I know that I need my nine hours. And if I don't get my nine hours, I just, I, I can't function. For yeah. me, I don't need nine hours to function. However, that on some days would probably be nice. I wonder what it is. Is it the rate of recovery that somebody has? Like the efficiency? I'm not of a recovery? sleep expert. Don't even ask these are, me. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Well, need, I don't expect you to respond. But these are the questions that go through my head. Is, can somebody adapt to less sleep, or does that just become like over time? It just adds up, and you become like more chronically um, tired. Yeah. Is it? I feel like it's your rate of recovery. But I don't know. Yeah. But with regards, mm, I don't know. It, that might not be true. Remember Emily Abbott? She's like, I would sleep in for 10 hours a day. I rate think her rate of recovery. I think her recovery athlete, was super duper fast. She just had a lot to recover from. Well, yeah. So how fast are you recovering from whatever had happened? Mentally, yeah. physically, emotionally. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answer. Don't know either. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to add to to that question is, you guys, like, if you're like, I'm not really sure about this thing called purpose. Purpose. Um, and, you know, maybe I need to find out what my purpose is. My recommendation for you is just start by adding something positive to your morning routine. Something that will by default just make a positive impact on your psyche when you go uh, like when, when you wakey wakey what yeah like when you start your day so uh, like the methods of doing it are really endless it's up to you to find what's the thing for you and honestly that is why i make sure to that's why I have a more extensive morning routine as well. Because for me, having a positive attitude is a non-negotiable, right? So I need to physiologically put myself in a state that will make me feel present, at peace, um, you know, heart-filled, ready to serve, and just like ready to crush the day. Get up and get your blood flowing somehow. Swing your arms around. We stretch. If you can get your blood flowing, it helps also wake you up faster. Yeah. To be honest, I drink coffee not because I feel like I need coffee, but because I just like the taste of it. And it's fun and cozy in the morning. Me too. Me so, too, for sure. let's go next question. That was awesome. Um, Penny. Wozar. I think that's how you say that. Penny Wozar. That sounds a, like a that's famous a name. Powerful name. From Chicago. 
Maybe it is a famous name. Is it okay to work out at night and then go to sleep? Question mark. Does it feel okay? Do you fall asleep well? Do you sleep well? I don't, I would, I would imagine everybody's different. But mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about physiologically, like how, how close to bedtime are you finishing your workout? Because if we're talking about workout at night and it's like three or four hours before you go to bed versus like 30 minutes before you go to bed, there's going to be a different kind of position you're in when you go to bed. But, you know, people work out successfully in the evening all the time. Um, but now that I say that and I think about it, most of the successful people that I know work out at the beginning of their day. Now, for me, I know why that is for them. Some of them I know why that is, but I don't know for all of them. Um, but for me and what I've heard from a lot of other like successful people is that it just starts the day well, and you know if you've done it, like then it's done. You've taken care of yourself, you've moved your body, you've got your blood flowing, um, and then you can get into the day and then not have to think about it happening later in the day. Now from like a, an adrenaline standpoint or like a hormonal standpoint, I would say you're probably a little bit more amped up if you're working out and you finish your workout like 30 minutes or an hour before you go to bed. Like you don't give yourself an opportunity to come back down. You might just have a harder time falling asleep. But shit, maybe you're gonna work out at 5 p.m., go to bed at 6 p.m., and you're not gonna wake up till 6 a.m. I would still say there's plenty of sleep. So I think it's all kind of relative. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think for one, that's a great question. Yeah. For two, th there's no right or wrong. Like just from a big picture standpoint, there's no right or wrong with what time you work out. What matters most with regards to that time is that you can be most consistent with it. And like you said, knowing the elements of our lives, I know that if I was to wake up, if I was to work out in the evening, my likelihood of being consistent, aka I do not miss a workout, um, unless, God forbid, last last year when I got the coronavirus, I took literally an entire week off because mm -hmm. I felt like shit. And that's the longest that I took off in a while. But Aaron and I are very consistent with our workouts. Like there's no excuses with regards to, oh, there's this, this, and that that we have to do. We plan our calendar way in advance to make sure that we fit it in. So in the morning, that's when we're able to get it in. Okay, that's when we make time for it because as the day goes by, like our brains are starting to get tired and then it's, man, it's like pulling this thing called motivation or willpower. And it's like, don't try to flex your willpower muscle when you don't have to. Um, but the truth is, Penny, is that if, if you know that like you're just the kind of person who prefers to work out at night and it works well with your schedule and you can be consistent, awesome. Now, from a physiological standpoint, there's two parts to, to um, our, our nervous system. We have our sympathetic nervous system and our parasympathetic nervous system, okay? And one is in charge of resting and digesting the other one is in charge of fight or flight so when you work out the part of the nervous system that's in charge of fight or flight is being activated now you can't just switch from one to the other like immediately like it takes some time so you know from a physiological standpoint there is the potential again i can't put anything in a box so there is a potential that you know your sleep quality could be hindered depending on what time you work out but like aaron said if let's say you work out at six and you go to bed at 11 then you you've got like a good amount of time for it to not affect you um the other question that we have to ask too is 
We, we live in a society where so many people take these things that are called pre-workouts. Mm. Um, now, if you add like, you know, a pre-workout to the mix where there's caffeine, there is all this artificial shit that just fires you up. Stimulus. Then that's going to overstimulate you and probably hinder your sleep quality even more. So my only question to you is how is your sleep quality? Like, do you feel like it's being negatively affected? If not, and you're being consistent with your workouts by fitting it in at that time, awesome. Yeah. If something works, why change it? Might, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. but if you know that there that there is an opportunity and you're like, you know what? I, I feel really tired um, when I wake up and maybe that's why you you prefer to work out in the evenings because you're like, I'm not a morning person. I would challenge you and say, are you really not a morning person? Or are you just way overstimulated at the end of the day, can't sleep well, so the morning is being wasted when it could be more efficient. But big picture standpoint, most people will become more consistent with their workouts if they work out in the morning. So I would recommend to most people, unless you can give me a really good reason as to why you're working out at night, do the best that you can to, to work out in the morning because you guys have lives, you guys have fires to put out, you guys have other people that you're responsible for, and the more you leave your workout for later on in the day, and that requires this thing called willpower, the less likely you are to do it. That's it. But no matter what, it comes down to what can you, can, what can you be consistent at? And my question to your question is why are you asking? Is it because you're having a hard time sleeping or is it because you just heard something on Dr. Phil one time? It's Dr. Phil still. I don't know, but I remember now my- it's Dr. Oz, right? Oh yeah, Dr. Oz. I remember my, my mom would say it. Well, I heard on this magazine or that show and I'm just like, insert, hand, insert hand, hand, and, hand and face emoji. Cause you never know. I never know. Yeah. All right. Tracy Banks from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Whoop, whoop. Okay, I'll read it. Yeah, go ahead. I lost 50 pounds last year, but kind of fell off the wagon. But I noticed I really didn't get tone and muscle definition. I was counting macros and measuring my food, but I struggle with eating a lot of protein. Is there a certain amount needed to get that tone and muscular definition? I have a habit of comparing myself to others, but it just seems to come more easy for some. I'm hoping you can give me some helpful tips to get to my fitness goals. I feel like we could spend a lot of time on this question. Yeah. First of all, congratulations on the 50 pounds lost mm -hmm. because that's a big deal and that's awesome. Yeah. Second of all, I wonder how long you've been doing fitness and what kind of fitness you did, if any, to lose the 50 pounds. Yeah, because there's a difference between weight loss and body comp, you guys. Weight loss means that you're just getting rid of weight. It could be muscle, it could be fat, it could be water, it could be all three of them. Um, if you lose 50 pounds, then chances are is that it's probably a combination of all three. And depending on the type of workout that you combine with, you can um, make it more efficient in the sense that it, the, the ratio of fat to muscle um, lost is a lot smaller. I mean, my first thought is if you lose 50 pounds, a considerable amount of that is fat. Oh yeah. Because there is not, uh, your body wants to keep as much muscle as possible yeah. by nature. Right. So, you know, it, it, weight is weight. Yes. It's just mass in general, period. Mm -hmm. Your body is not just made of fat and muscle. You have bones, you have blood, you have water, you have all this other stuff, organs and everything in here. So, but 50 pounds lost is like, well, you didn't, I hope you didn't lose a kidney. But like the weight lost is predominantly fat in that instance, because that's the source that your body can gain and lose the fastest other than water, I would say, actually. But um, 
What I see here is that there's a lot of talk of nutrition. I was counting macros and measuring food, but I struggled to eat a lot of protein. Is there a certain amount that I need to get tone and muscular definition? But there's no talk of fitness. There's no talk of the movement that was done or the exercise um, that you did in this process. I would guess that there's some, um, but I'm not sure. Tracy, are you here? Are you on this live right now? That would be cool. Okay, so I want to mention some things that I, yeah, that I see in this question. So there is three main points that I'm looking at in in this entire question. Point number one, macros. Point number two, self talk. Point number three, lack of clarity. So it seems as if you've done a really good job with just the structure that macros has given you and macros is great in the sense that when you get you when you're being given a, a, a macros guideline now you have a guideline to follow versus none structure uh, yes yes so stru so if somebody goes from having no structure to some structure yes you're gonna see some improvement okay great now the bigger thing and that and that is probably why you ended up falling off the wagon is I see a huge opportunity with regards to your self-talk. Okay. So we're talking about lots of limiting beliefs. Do you really believe that you can achieve that body and how do you do that? And then also it seems as if there is a lot of blind spots, um, which lead to lack of clarity of what does it really take in order to achieve more muscle definition um, and dropping the weight, keeping the weight off, and being consistent. Okay, the fact that you said I fell off the wagon tells me that you probably kind of know how to eat when it comes to our food. Macros is just one element. When it comes to our food, there's three things that we have to take into account, okay? Macros only takes one of them into account, okay? So from a nutri nutritional standpoint, chances are is that you're missing two other things. Um, so macros is one. So, so what, what you're eating, is it a real food or a food like product? You have to understand that. I don't care how much macros it, it has. Um, point number two is how much are you eating? This is when macros will come into play. It gives you structure with regards to the how much. And point number three, that macros does not discuss is how does this affect my body? Okay. From a hormonal standpoint. Okay, if you want to become more toned and achieve more muscle definition, then you have to make sure that not only you're eating real foods, the right foods that affect your body positively from a hormonal standpoint, but that you're also eating it in the right quantities. Okay, so to me, it sounds, yeah, you had structure with regards to quantity. However, with regards to quality, we're really not sure. I can only help but to assume due to society's food industry, um, that that is not the case. Um, and then, you know, the fact that you were struggling to keep it off tells me that, you know, there is definitely an area of opportunity with regards to the environment that you're in, be it um, social, mental, physical, probably all of the above. Um, definitely mindset is a huge thing because I'm seeing like, you know, some kind of like limiting beliefs. Um, and then, you know, what you need to do is you need to learn how to build habits so that you don't have to track all the freaking time. It's exhausting, you guys. Why do people fall off the wagon? I would say there's a few reasons, but the first one that comes to mind is that you don't like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If you don't like what you're doing, you're not going to keep doing it. Then we fall off the wagon. If you're not educated enough on how to navigate your life scenarios that happen, and you don't have a structure that is flexible enough to work through them, you will fall off the wagon. Think about it. I'm doing keto, but then I went on vacation. Why? Because you can't fucking do that on vacation. <laughs> like you can't, it's like, how do I, how do I not eat this and not eat that and not eat that? 
like when I'm just surrounded by it. So a lot of it's environment, right? Um, so you also have to ask yourself, like Sarit said, what's my environment? What's my physical environment? Do I have things in my house that are helping me get closer to my goals or further away from my goals? Do I have, am I reading or consuming or watching things that are positively enforcing my goals or negatively enforcing me away from my goals? Mm -hmm. Am I, um, hanging out with people who have habits that are going to take me away from from my goals or hanging out with people who have habits that are an improvement of mine that are going to push me, challenge me and stretch me to change and be better in my own habits. So a lot of that is environment. Now, when we're talking about like the muscle definition part, because it seems like that's the concern. I fell off the wagon, which is, we don't want you to fall off the wagon, right? Um, and the concern though seems to be, I lost a bunch of weight, but I can't see my muscles. Now, I would ask, is there more body fat that you need to lose? Maybe you lost 50, but in order for you to see your muscles, you have to lose 100. Because if you have fat in excess quantities, there's a certain amount of essential fat that we all need to protect our organs and things like that. Nobody's at 0% body fat unless you're a corpse, but even then, most likely not. Yeah, you don't want, fat is, it, it's helpful good. in a lot certain of fat circumstances. Is not. Yeah, so if you have still, like if, if, if things seem soft or flat, there's probably still some more body fat that's just covering up the lines, the definition, the lines. Right, y'all seen Sarit's shoulders. There's like 30 lines just in one shoulder. Um, but the other thing is your fitness at that point matters. Mm -hmm. Now, you can be healthy and you can be in good shape without, you know, hardcore lifting weights, all that. My grandma, my grandma is like 112 years old. Not really, but my grandma's like 80 something. Do she does like dragon boat racing and shit? Like I'm stoked to have any of those genes in me. My grandma, all she does is walk every day. Mm -hmm. Ever since I've been alive and I can like cognitively remember, my grandma has walked every single day. Now, does my grandma look jacked? No, but is she healthy? Yes, very much so. And I was talking to her the other day and she's like, I don't feel my age. And I was like, good, that's awesome. She's like in her eighties. That's awesome. So, you know, it's, and all she's done is walked and paid attention to, she's had awareness of what she eats and she's made her best effort to eat well. Does that mean she eats perfect? Fuck no, my grandma likes cake just like anybody else. But she's very aware and she does her exercise every day. Mm -hmm. So that's not gonna give you a lot of muscle though. So the, um, the type of fitness that you're doing then is what's gonna either build muscle or not build muscle. And it requires weight bearing activity. It requires adding a weighted stimulus consistently over a long period of time. So then my next question is, if you were doing fitness or if you were lifting weights, for how long were you consistent at it? Because the muscles that people have, and it depends on who you're comparing yourself to or who you're envisioning or who you look at that you're inspired by, we're like, wow, that's, you know, I wanna get to that point. Depends on, on how extreme it is from like female, like roided out, which is fine if that's your jam, I'm not hating, um, to like skinny, skinny like where on that spectrum do you want to fall because it's going to matter what you do for fitness it's going to matter how you lift weights it's going to matter how consistent you are at lifting weights it's going to matter how hard you push yourself to get to a certain level and most of the people that you see like sarit and i if you i there's been a lot of people like you know i want to look like Aaron or sarit or whatever you have to understand that we've been consistent at lifting for years. 
Yeah. It doesn't happen overnight. I remember comparing myself to my personal trainer, like probably 11 or 12 years ago. And I was like, man, you can eat like cookies and you still just, you still stay fit. You still stay, like you still have your muscles. You can see them all. It doesn't even look like anything's changed. I eat a cookie and I, and I didn't get really fat. It's not, not cause I ate a cookie. It's cause that one cookie led me to eat the entire freaking Milano bag of cookies. And then, and then I ate it for an entire week. And then I decided to make peanut butter sandwiches out of those cookies was a good idea. Oh. And then it just like keeps going, right? That's why I wasn't where I wanted to be. But we're like in denial mode of <laughs> like, I eat pretty healthy. <laughs> and in the meantime, you're like hiding in the pantry, like slamming chocolate. Um, so the fitness, this is a very long winded answer to like, you also have to give it time. You have to be consistent. You need to lift. You need to have some kind of structure that you're following regularly in order to get the muscles to show and you've got to be patient. Most people, um, I want to add to that a little bit. For one, Tracy, um, I would love to learn more about your goals Mm -hmm. um, because the reality is it sounds as if you're stuck but we're really not sure what do you want. So, you know, we, we dissected a lot of elements to your questions, but we still, I'm, I'm still not sure what direction to give you because I don't know what is it that you want um, or what is it that you need. He's good. He's doing yoga. Boogie doing yoga. Maybe. I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, but something that we, um, or a question or a concern that has been asked by multiple, by a few of our clients recently is the concern of a plateau or, um, starting out and when 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 they started out they felt as if the the weight dropped quickly and now because it's not something is definitely wrong most people will never even come close to achieving their goal because they're too impatient the progress that you're going to see at the beginning of your journey versus six months into your journey versus a year or two or five years into your journey is going to look completely different, completely different. So plateau is just a part of the game. Um, you know, most people have this, um, thought process that when you hit a plateau, that's bad. No, when If you've hit a plateau, that's because your body has gone to a point where it just adapted so well to the stimulus. Because remember, we were born to survive. So your body is going to try to do everything that it can to survive with regards to any stimulus. So when you start something new, it's going to take your body a couple of weeks to get adjusted. So plateau just means that you've adjusted to the new stimulus so you're not gonna feel as sore as you did at the beginning that's great that means that your recovery has improved you know fat is not gonna be dropped as as fast as as it did before you guys this is why it's more a game of mindset than it is anything else because let's say you know you started your journey and at the beginning on a weekly basis you were you were at a rate of dropping three pounds Per week but then you know four months into it you're like man I barely dropped half a pound something must be going on so for one if you tell yourself that something is going on then now you're gonna get yourself in a rabbit hole and you're gonna start researching shit and people are gonna validate validate that something is wrong and you for one you're manifesting BS which is terrible 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 and for two There's nothing wrong with that. Your progress on the visible part is going to 
slow down. You're not going to see as much change on as fast of a rate as you did before. But the most successful ones are the ones who just accepted that and kept on going through with it. You guys, we see, we see it literally like in any element of life. We see it in weight loss. This is why the weight loss industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. Because people are just being felt, fed bullshit stories and now that is like the norm. To think that, you know, let's say if you have 100 pounds to lose that you're going to drop it in 20 days. But it took you like a decade to gain that weight. Look, you guys, you didn't get to where you are today overnight. You're not, you're not going to get to your ultimate, your current ultimate overnight either. If you've been really consistent and really diligent, then you know what? One year from now, your life is going to look completely different. Five years from now, your life is going to look completely different. Most people keep, have, like, attempt, have attempted to lose weight for decades simply because they just didn't follow through. And the fact that you too. Um, and the fact that the weight loss industry is just full of trickery is really not helping us either because it gives everybody this perception that, you know what, it's going to be quick and it's going to be easy. And everybody thinks that, you know, it's going to be this magic pill. Like, no, dude, you have to climb a very long hill. And the higher up you go, the thinner the air gets. Everybody wants to everybody wants to reach the top, but not everybody's willing to do whatever it takes. Because once you start hitting Mondaneville, you can't see anything. You just have to get through it. You have to believe it and you have to feel it before you see it for quite a bit of time. And it's that's faith. what it's it's faith, it's diligence, it's patience. And that's not something that's natural for most people in the 21st century because if you want to, you know, stock up your Nespresso with Starbucks, you can just say, hey, Alexa, order me another one. And it'll be at your doorstep in a couple of hours. Alexa, order me Nespresso pods. <laughs> Would you like to add that to your cart? <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah, Boogie's not feeling well, so... He needs to go somewhere to see somebody. Just one time? Yeah. So that's the last question of today. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Sorry I had to step away for just a second. Um, it's muy importante. And we love you guys. We hope that you found value in today's conversation. Again, um... We love answering your questions, but you know, if you have any, any questions with regards to, I see all these people doing these programs and I'm not sure what program to do then just like, like Aaron said, um, email support at Aaron and and we'll be sure to assist you. Who is it? Um, Tracy, I would love to learn more about your goals. Um, so that, you know, we can, we can put you on the right sustainable path. Uh, because it sounds as if you really want it and it sounds as if you're kind of confused. So you need some clarity for sure. That's all I got for today. Yeah, and, and Crystal, feel free to reach out to Tracy as well um, if she's not live on this either. So we'll get in contact somehow. But um, Or Nick. Um, if you guys have questions for us, again, please submit them to the form that we have through a very simple link you click on in the announcement section of our page. And we will be happy to do that. But for now, we'll see you guys same time tomorrow. Bye. Bye.